Hey, welcome back to the Kariba Norway channel. Uh, I'm Eric. I'm here following up my MacBook Pro review video, now with the Legion 7 from Lenovo. Um, I've had the Legion 7 for a little over a week or so, maybe two weeks. Uh, so the supply chain came through, bless. Uh, <laughs> style of video that I'm trying to do today is not kind of this uh, belabored showing all the testing process. I've all the testing is done. So there's this kind of this this funny thing in the in the comments on the MacBook video is that anyone that was sort of pro Mac had assumed that I had decided to go PC and anyone that was pro PC because I was making a video about a MacBook that assumed that I had decided to go pro Mac. Uh, I hadn't made my mind up at that point. I'm not gonna give it away just yet, but I think when you see the test results, it'll be pretty obvious which direction I'm gonna go. Seeing a top-end PC and a near top-end MacBook head-to-head -head will maybe help inform your own decision-making process. You know, the things that are important to me may not be important to you, so keep that in mind. But anyway, before we get into the, those test results, I want to go over a couple hardware things uh, about the Lenovo compared to the MacBook. Uh, and just talk about my impressions on those. So on the hardware side of things, you know, the MacBook, it's it's a beautiful device. Um, I think they both are in their own right. The Lenovo is a mostly metal build also, just like the MacBook is. Um, so they both feel really solid and they, they have kind of a, a density to them that feels like premium, high-end, you know. To me, the keyboard on the MacBook is the thing that feels the cheapest. There's kind of a plasticky sound to the typing, whereas on the Lenovo, there's a bit more of a, a thud. It's a little deeper sounding. I don't have this, it's a little, you know, it's just a little deeper sounding, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Additionally, for me, the Lenovo just has way more keys on it. Um, you know, it's got the full-size keyboard, but it also has a nine key. Uh, numpad, and also just simple buttons like the home button or the insert button. I use the insert button to import audio into my sessions. The home button just brings me to the beginning of the session. MacBook keyboards don't have all those extra buttons. And ultimately, I kind of started to find that a little limiting. You know, I would, even when I was, you know, editing text or, or sort of writing, you know, writing a document out, I was always like, where's the home button? Where's the end button? I, I, I know there's a shortcut, uh, but... And now I can't think of it off the top of my head. So that, that's an issue that I have with the keyboard. Additionally, the the keyboard on the, the MacBook is, is less textured. It was just harder to kind of feel the individual keys. There's just, it's kind of more of an, a, just a, a bunch of like plastic squares. Uh, the texture on the Lenovo just feels a little bit tackier and my fingers just stay on the home row better. The overall feel just feels a little bit more solid. If I am comparing the two, the keyboard on the MacBook does feel a bit cheaper. It's a little harder for me to use day to day. Still a very good keyboard. I would I would not say it's a bad one, um, but that is definitely something to keep in mind. The main thing is the screen. You know, so the MacBook screen, it, it's extremely bright. It has a huge, like a really high contrast ratio. And what that means is you get really dark blacks. You get really bright highlights. Viewing content on the screen is fantastic. But after a little while, I, I started to feel like I never really noticed the 120 hertz uh, ProMotion that this has. There's a bit of softness in motion on this screen that, that was really surprising to me. I didn't, it, it didn't really jump out to me until I got the Lenovo. And the, oh, <laughs> the, screen, the screen went to sleep. Hopefully that's not a problem. Uh, the screen on the Lenovo runs at 165 hertz, uh, which is kind of a strange number, but uh, you can switch it between 60 or 165, um, and it's just kind of always running at 165. Using this more, and because I am able to just install Reaper, install all my plugins, and get the Lenovo up and running, I've been using it more actively um, to produce music and work on this computer, where it was going to take a lot more work on the Mac for me to get there. And I didn't want to do that work unless I knew the Mac was going to be the, the computer I end up getting. There's like a significant amount of ghosting on the mouse cursor on the Mac that, that is not present on the Lenovo. And then like scrolling text in the, the Google Doc that I'm showing is just, to me, dramatically blurrier on the Mac. Like 
like it looks like a looks like an older LCD that that you know would just exhibit ghosting uh, issues. And I have I have seen some people bring this up about the MacBooks is that you know the screen has this initial wow factor, but the response time on these screens is very very low. With the Lenovo being a gaming you know a gaming oriented PC, it's going to have a very high uh, response time. That that means the Lenovo to me has a nicer overall experience. You know this isn't a device that I only want to consume content on. It's something that I'm creating content on. Uh, it's something that you know I'm using a program that's gonna that has a lot of small text and a lot of small little uh, items and edit points and and markers and other things that I want to be able to see very easily when I'm moving quickly in a in a session. With the Mac, I almost have to stop scrolling in order to sort of catch up. Oh, what? Where am I in the session? Where am I on this web on the web page? Where am I in the doc? Before I can actually start acting on on that document or acting on that session. Whereas with the Lenovo, I I the readability is still there even when when scrolling when in motion, uh, zooming in and out on edit points and stuff. I don't lose the place. I don't have to sort of reorient myself because the screen sort of blurred out and while I was doing that zoom. I, I think that's really a preference thing. The 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 bright the ultimate brightness that this can get, uh, while the Lenovo is no slouch on brightness, uh, you know, this can get a peak brightness. It's a high dynamic range screen, so you can display HDR content. There are aspects of this that that are nicer. Again, it feels like this laptop was custom built for video production and essentially nothing else. And then last thing is very simple is just the port situation with the Mac. You know, we, we kind of know what we got at this point on these guys, uh, just USB C's. Um, so this is, you know, I have to have dongles in order to connect all my devices. If I am working and producing, I would need to actually get a USB hub in order to connect uh, some, you know, MIDI controllers and other devices in order to like run my studio out of this. With the, the Lenovo, I don't have to worry about any of that. I've got three USB-Cs, I've got three USB-As, I've got HDMI, I've got an Ethernet plug, which is nice. Ports aren't that exciting, <laughs> but it is what it is. The Lenovo is not a super thick laptop. I was sort of expecting it to be a bit thicker. You know, so that's still a fairly thin laptop and this, this games extremely well. I've been playing games at all, you know, ultra settings, super high frame rate, super high resolution. So the the size difference isn't really something that I that I'm gonna I would consider. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is you know about a, a comparable size to this, but it doesn't have all the extra keys. It doesn't have the nine key keypad. I would also have a notch at the screen, which you know the notch isn't that big of a deal, but it's there. I don't like it. Like it, it's not nice. It, this isn't this isn't like the goal. This isn't the end goal of for Apple. The, Apple will need to remove this eventually. This isn't the final form of this product. And I don't really get that impression with the Lenovo. Yeah, the webcam's not as nice, but I don't, that's not that important to me. <laughs> so with the hardware stuff out of the way, let's get into the test results. I'm not gonna show all the testing that I did, um, but I just kinda wanna quickly go over the results and then just try to wrap up the conclusions from that. So um, first off, I just want to throw up the simple specs for these laptops. So the Lenovo Legion, I got the Geekbench scores up here just to kind of see a relative comparison of these processors. One interesting thing is when I did the Geekbench on the MacBook today, my score was quite a bit lower than when I did it in the previous video. So there may be an update to Geekbench or there may be something about how they're actually you know, maybe have updated to test these CPUs. Uh, I rebooted this computer because I was like, maybe, maybe I've just had it up for a while and rebooting it will get a better score, but I got the exact same score on the MacBook. So these are both eight core CPUs, essentially, you know, the top offerings from Apple and, and, and AMD in this case. Uh, and you will see that the Ryzen 9 does score a little bit better barely better on the multi uh, multi thread but you know a decent little chunk better on the single core you know the, these geekbench scores again still i don't really understand what the score means <laughs> so real quick we did i did the same psp saturator test because that gives me um that gives me the ability to test the mac using an arm version of reaper and the arm version of psp saturator i reran the test uh today versus 
using the same results that I got before, just because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, uh, Reaper had an update. Uh, I made sure that the PSP saturator was updated on everything. So today, with the PSP saturator on my six-year-old desktop PC, I was able to get 51 instances of PSP saturator. Uh, this saturator is also running at the four times over sampling mode, so it is pushing the CPU as hard as it can. And I do have a music track that's being run through it. I don't think that's gonna take more CPU than just running it on a simple vocal track. I wanted to make sure that it had, you know, some legitimate audio in there. Uh, so with the desktop PC, was, I was able to get 51 instances with the Mac on ARM, with the ARM version of PSP Saturator, 81 instances, uh, which is a bit lower. I was able to get 107 last test. So I'm not sure what the issue is there. You know, I, I don't know if, if this laptop is slowing down in a, in a way, but you know, that's, that's what I was able to get. 82 was not able to play back uh, and would, would drop out. Uh, so then with the Legion, I have two, I have a couple modes, uh, a quiet mode and a balanced mode are the ones that I would be using for music production. There is a performance mode, but that's kind of for gaming. It like just cranks the power up. The fans are going wild. I don't even really use the performance mode for gaming. I just keep it on balance and it kicks up when it needs to, but it's also able to, to ramp down when it's not needed. So performance mode just keeps it, uh, pinned like at maximum all the time. So the Lenovo Legion uh, on quiet mode with the PSP saturator, I got 93 instances. So even on quiet mode where the fans are barely moving on the, the Lenovo, I was able to get more than the Mac. And then bumping up to balanced mode where the fans will spin up and it will get a little bit hotter, make a little bit more noise. Uh, 121 instances of saturator. And then also real quick, I just wanted to see if there would be any render time advantages uh, between any of these computers. So I rendered out at each computer's maximum amount of instances. I rendered out five minutes of this, of this audio loop. The desktop PC rendered at seven minutes, 56 seconds. Uh, the Mac rendered at exactly eight minutes. The Lenovo Legion on quiet was six minutes, 45 and the Legion on balance. So technically should be more power was seven minutes. So a bit slower than quiet. So I don't really think that those render times mean a whole lot. Let's just wrap up the PSP saturator test here. So the desktop is our baseline computer here. Uh, the Mac gave me a 58% increase uh, on PSP saturator instances. Uh, the Legion on quiet got an 82 percentage increase over the desktop and the Legion on balanced got a 130, 137% improvement. I think like right there, that definitely is pushing the Legion ahead for me. Considering the additional uh, hurdles that I would have to using the Mac, you know, getting my sessions actually transitioned over to this computer and running is something that I would probably have to rebuild the sessions, you know, track by track adding fresh instances of the plugins that I'm using and then copy the settings. Like I would be sort of having the desktop computer running and, you know, do it, be doing a, Oh, this track has this compressor and this EQ and these are the settings. So let me set that. Like I would have to go through each of the sessions, each of the production sessions that I'm running right now and do that in order to get the Mac working. Whereas with the Legion, it just, I just loaded it up. There was like no hurdle to using the Lenovo and I'm getting what is a pretty significant improvement in performance over this MacBook. Uh, so moving a little bit away from the MacBook, uh, I just wanted to get an idea of what type of improvement or additional headroom I'm getting on the Legion compared to the desktop PC. So what I did is I brought up uh, a real session uh, that Pierre and I are working on. It's almost finished. We had been using the desktop PC for production, so I had to kind of go through and clean the session up, freeze some tracks, and kind of get it so that the desktop wasn't completely dying when we ran the session. Currently, the desktop PC in playback on this song is at about 60% CPU use. Uh, so still totally usable, but that's because I did some work to make it usable. I, you know, rendered out some, tr some, some auto-tune tracks and other things like that. I then checked the, le the Legion on quiet mode and balanced mode, and oddly, they both were running at 20% usage. What I think that leads me to believe is that the balanced and quiet mode, if I'm running only at 20% usage, the quiet mode and balanced are essentially the same, you know, because balanced is able to essentially be quiet mode when it's, when it, when there's no need to ramp up that power and ramp up those those fans. 
But I think if I were to push the quiet mode into 60%, the balanced would start to ramp up power usage, uh, which would then probably give me more headroom. The desktop PC rendering at 3 minutes 38 seconds, the Legion on quiet mode was 2 minutes 35 seconds, and the Legion on balance was 2.22. So again, not a huge difference between quiet and balanced, but about a one minute improvement on the Legion in general. And, you know, I think really the test results speak for themselves. In addition to the behind the scenes work that I essentially haven't had to do with the Legion to be able to integrate it into my, my workflow. It really was as simple as installing all my plugins, which isn't simple to, to be fair, <laughs> but it really was as simple as just going through, installing all that software, you know, copied the session from my desktop to the Legion and it just opened, it worked. And I could immediately see, you know, wow, I can just run this computer at that 64, uh, 64 sample buffer size. I have a ton of headroom. Like I can double or triple these sessions. Like I could just, you know, take the, the real world session test and I could, I could duplicate all the tracks two times over. So to me, tripling the size of the session and still have headroom uh, and be able to keep working. The MacBook, when it comes to battery life, is, is unmatched. Uh, it's extremely impressive that it's able to maintain that performance on battery, fairly cool and with really no, no fan noise. That's amazing. If I was recording in remote places where battery was really necessary, the MacBook would be 100% the obvious choice. When I say I'm moving to a more mobile setup and I want to be more mobile with my music production setup, what I really mean is that I want, I want to be able to easily travel with my recording computer, you know, and, and having to haul a desktop PC all over the place is just not going to work for me. And this laptop is fairly, you know, fairly small. The power brick is another story. <laughs> the thing is obnoxiously large. I will be able to rely on there being wall power uh, where I'm at. I've had this Mac for about you know a month or so, and I've been using it every day. Uh, it is kind of my casual computer, which is sort of silly. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty ridiculous casual computer. But overall, like the Mac hasn't really added anything to my life. Uh, and as someone that does enjoy games and, um, especially over the, you know, in the winter, it's kind of a nice time to get back into gaming. The Legion has been really nice that I now have an extremely powerful gaming PC. That's more, you know, gives me better performance and visuals than a P PlayStation five or the latest Xbox and playing the new halo. It, it runs amazing. It looks great. It's a lot of fun, you know, so I have this kind of this additional, hobby that this computer facilitates that this one doesn't. Um, you know, I'm just kind of watching videos and shows on the, on the MacBook. That's fine and all, but I prefer to play games if I'm going to have some kind of leisure time like that. It's, it's a little bit more active. It's a little bit more engaged, but it's no surprise. I'm, I'm going with the Legion. Um, I think it's, it's the right choice for me. And I think it's, it would be the right choice for a lot of people. To me, I want something that's going to give me the absolute best performance on the market. And for certain use cases, the Mac is that computer, but for basically every other use case that's not video production, this is definitely the computer. But I just wanted to be very, you know, realistic about, about this process and be, try to be as transparent as possible about what my needs are, what my impressions are of these computers. I think for me, it was really a journey past all the hype, uh, the review hype of the MacBooks and and I think that for the most part, like, you know, YouTube reviewers specifically, like it was all really focused on video production and, uh, having done some video production on the Lenovo, uh, the advantage on the MacBook is really only in the render times for me. Uh, the user experience of using, I was using DaVinci Resolve on both of these computers, um, DaVinci Resolve ran really well on the Mac, but I, I felt like there were just a few more stutters. Whereas with the Lenovo, uh, I never got any stutters at all. Um, so I had a, a little bit smoother of an experience in the editing pro uh, process on the Lenovo. The render times on the MacBook, because they have those specific processing blocks, 
you know, that's going to give the MacBook an advantage. But, you know, I'm not a video professional. So those, you know, shaving off five minutes of render time doesn't really matter to me. Rendering, rendering this video out is just an opportunity to go take my dog for a walk, you know, go get some food or something. I don't know how many more tech style reviews uh, I'm going to be doing uh, on this channel, this sort of computer upgrade process for, for music producers, you know, something that you're hoping to maybe do once every six, eight years, you know, this is a, a expensive purchase. It's a big one. You want it to last you a long time. Um, and so I'm really, you know, I'm really excited to see how this, this ultimately lasts me, but so far it's, it's just been really, really, it's been a really great experience using this computer. A lot of the fears that I had around getting a gaming laptop, I think were unfounded. Um, and maybe that's just because gaming laptops these days have a bit come into their own. Uh, the miniaturization of things has really, you know, just kind of made these computers not chunky and, and basically like mini desktops. It's, it's not even that chunky for a laptop. I'm impressed with where things are at these days. So definitely, you know, there's gonna be some more music production specific stuff on this channel in the future. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.